What's going on guys? Welcome to the stream today. Um, today I'm going to be joined by Adrian from Wombat. I'm very excited about it as well. And uh, also Adrian is going to join us I think um, in a Discord call so we could have a chat. I'm not too sure. Might just be hanging around in the background there in the, in the chat. Not sure. Uh, but we'll see what goes on. I mean Adrian from from our, from the crew teams, not from the Wombat. Because I'm joined by Adrian of course from Wombat. Anyway, let me, without further ado, let's go straight to him. Um, oh, he's gone. Hello, Cam. Sorry, yeah. stream. There we go. Hiya, Adrian. How's it going? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let me get a little volume check here, guys. Um, how's Adrian's volume looking there for you guys, please? Check, check. Is that good? For me, it's good. Uh, <laughs> I just want to <laughs> make sure the, boy, yeah. the guys in chat can hear everything. What's going on? It's a bit low, okay. Hello, yeah, there I am. Here he is. <laughs> For me now, that is the highest I can get it to go. Okay, way better, fantastic, great. Um, good stuff, good stuff. Well, hi guys, welcome to the stream. Um, thanks very much for coming down. Um, and Adrian, especially, thank you so much for coming. Um, we've got quite a few questions that we want to ask because we've sure. we and the reason being is we've gone and we've gone and got ourselves uh, one of the nine Genesis land packs, um, and we want to make our dungeon there for um, crew tunes and for our collection. So um, and another thing as well is we've got two uh, we have got, we've got two of our community that have three actually one has gone and got himself a 15 land pack another guy's got two lands and we want to all join together so like it's gonna be if if, if this type of thing is possible which I'm, I'm pretty sure it is uh, yeah we're pretty excited about it and we, we think it's gonna be really good um, for now I just want to see if I wonder why the chat, oh, let me have a quick look. The chat is trying to get in there. Oh, they are, and it is working, that's good. Okay, so I just want the chat to start getting into a growfish there. We're gonna give away a quick wombat pack. Um, I'll be back with you in one sec. I need to do something quickly because my child is calling me and I need to go and check why, because it sounds important. It'll be one sec. Cool, so we're gonna be playing grubfish. That's awesome. Um, Always a lot of fun. And there we go. Um, yeah, half the music. Okay, cool. Bring down the music a bit more. It's nice to get it all fixed up in the start, you know. Okay. Um, so yeah, bro, we, we've... It was something that we were discussing for quite some time, actually, to get these... Um, to get the land ourselves. And um, it was it was pretty. Oh, how can I get him in? Um, it was pretty. It was pretty exciting when we did get to eventually get the land. It was just around New Year's that we picked it up. Um, and uh, it's when when how will I even start? Could you tell <laughs> us your basis of of like how how you see these these dungeons working for 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 the company itself, your company itself? For us, um, so <clears throat> maybe I'll give a little bit of background on how we started Dungeon Master to begin with. Yes. And that, uh, where this grew so that um, it's kind of <clears throat> more understandable why we're doing lands and that why we didn't do lands from the get-go, right? And uh, why suddenly we're coming up with that idea of, of land and, um, and multiple dungeons. So okay. originally when, uh, when we launched or when we started working on Dungeon Master, we basically just wanted to kind of gamify NFT staking, right? So the idea was, okay, you stake NFTs and then uh, you, you press a button once a day and then at the end of the season, you get a reward, right? Yeah. So that was the idea. And it was so simple um, and we didn't know what would happen with it. Uh, so we've done that uh, quite quite a few times before that we basically just tried something in the most simplest form and then um, check out like whether people like it, what, whether people use it, and then if they use it, then we kind of double down on it. Okay. So on the first day, we had about 7,000 people staking in a piece into Dungeon Master. Wow. And we're like, whoa, okay, that is much more than we had expected. On the first day? On the first day. Holy smokes. What year was that? That was um, a year ago. That what? Was December 2021. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And, uh, <laughs> and that was because like, we had, we obviously had the community from Wombat, right? And a lot of Wombat people actually wanted to stake their NFTs. So, 
Um, so we didn't know what would happen with it, right? But then after there was so many people staking and, and playing the game and basically just clicking once a day, right? Uh, right. Like, okay, then we should probably expand on that. So we started adding items and, uh, and more different run durations and um, the well of wealth and um, all kinds of different features. And uh, but one one of the core problems still is that we are the gatekeepers for. Um, for the collections that are stakeable and for the mining powers and so on, right? Yeah. So we don't uh, we don't actually want to be that, right? And we have a lot of discussions with the co uh, with the uh, creators um, and there's a lot of great ideas. But uh, eventually we said, okay, how about there's competition in how rules are being set up, and we don't have to set the rules anymore, like all the rules, not only just the stakeable NFT collections, but also the, the weights, but the, um, the run durations, whether there's different run duration or just one and so on, right? So we said, okay, it would be so cool to have multiple dungeons, but to have these dungeons not be run by us. Um, and we just run our own one dungeon and everybody else can just run their own dungeons and make the rules as they want to, uh, them to be, right? And right, right. It would be competition between those dungeons because players wouldn't want to play kind of all dungeons, but um, just a few, right? And then at, 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 everyone would basically choose the dungeon uh, that fits their own strategy the best. Yes. Right? And, or who, of whom you, or where you would have uh, collections that you would want to stake, right? Um, and yeah, so that was the idea of, of Dungeon Worlds, basically. So we have that idea, like, the idea of having multiple dungeons we've had already back in probably February last year, right after we launched, basically, right? We thought, okay, it would be so cool to have uh, more than just one dungeon. But then um, we kind of only combined that with the idea of basically handing this all to the community uh, last year in fall, where we said, okay, this is actually where this game needs to go. When If we take it seriously, then we have to open up and have the community actually take care of all this stuff. And that's that's when we came up with the idea, okay, um, we can't just have anyone just set up their dungeon, so we need to make it a little bit um, kind of gated. So we said, okay, this, this is what typically um, games do lands for. Um, but also at the same time, there should be incentives to actually own land and run a dungeon, right? So that's how we set up the concept of the tax. So we'll be paying one bad tokens to um, the entirety of the, of the community, the entirety of the player base, basically. Um, and as a dungeon owner, you'll be able to set a tax so that you keep some of the reward that goes to the players of your dungeon at the end of the season, right? Yeah. Um, so that that was kind of the, the entire idea. And then we said, okay, um, we on, on one hand, we want to make these dungeons expandable, right? So they just they shouldn't just have a fixed size. Um, but then the question is, how do we expand? Uh, how do you expand them, and how large do they have to be? Because if we make like ten thousand lands, we don't want to have ten thousand dungeons, right? So that's why we said, okay, the minimum size would be a three by three, and um, then from there you can expand um, with with kind of smaller increments. Um, but that that was the whole point of having the, these three by three packs, so that you have adjacent uh, three by three. Um, lands basically so that that's kind of in a nutshell how it, how it all came down and why we're doing it the way we're doing it you're muted thank you cool so we love the sound of that that's really really good um so and knowing that that our friends and community can add theirs next to ours can and is is there going to be a functionality to do that to add, like you say you can add extra lands on so if we end up having say I don't know, say 30 lands, so let's just say, would, you, would we be able to have that that size of, of, of a, a plot next to each other? Does it make sense? Or is that how it's going to be laid out? I'm not sure. So originally the idea was that um, you would need a rectangular shape, right? So that it's not too easy um, to, to expand um, and there would be some kind of competition. But uh, based on the feedback that we've been getting, it seems like this is going to be a bit too hard, actually. So... Um, probably will go to some kind of any any shape of uh, any the kind of um, uh, joint lands um, will probably work for um, for your okay. of, uh, larger size dungeon right cool so um, obviously it's not going to be as easy to compute that and stuff but um, that's that's our current view that probably there's going to be like any any shape is going to be okay 
and the size of the dungeon will will play a few roles for instance in how many players you can have right the bigger your, dun your dungeon the more players you'll have the more players you have and also the bigger the dungeon um the more rewards you'll be getting or your dungeon will be getting right and also the more lands you have the more material will be mined by playing in your dungeon so that there's a, a bunch of advantages that you would want to leverage with your dungeons we also plan that there's going to be dungeon um equipment of sorts right yes. uh, eventually so obviously the size of the dungeon will also determine what what you're going to be allowed to actually place in your dungeon as as upgrades and as equipment um but uh, yeah that's that's not going to be there at launch okay okay well look we we we're looking forward to getting it what, what kind of what's your eta do you reckon for launch so our ETA is actually summer. So originally, wow. originally we we're saying like Q2. Um, now because we're now kind of actively developing uh, the first parts um, that we that we want to launch separately, right? So we always said that we want to have mining for individual lands. Yeah. Um, but we're also going to be launching training and breeding before the actual game uh, goes live. So that will actually like slightly defer the, the launch of the, of the kind of main game um, but we're still we're still hopeful for summer this year cool that'll be great look we didn't expect it that that early um, and hey, the earlier the better but as long as you're ready you know what I mean once you guys are ready don't I'm sure you guys are big enough to not be pushed around by, by anybody saying oh hurry up you know what I mean um, yeah I mean everybody always says hurry up exactly right? exactly um, so you just but, you got to deliver when you deliver when you're ready to put it out yeah and for us it's really now that that we've started working like actual uh, software development work on um on let's say mining right there's so many things you can do with these mining and, and training and uh reading components alone that we thought okay let's see how this goes as soon as these are out maybe people will actually demand more features for those and then we'll we'll have to like make decisions whether or not to delay the the main game but to keep developing more on the ideas that people have for for let's say breeding right because yeah reading is going to be super simple as, as everything yeah in the very beginning but then there's like we already have a backlog that would last for like a year or so if we were only to build on training and breeding for instance uh, gotcha. So there's there's all, all kinds of really interesting ideas. So yeah, I don't know. Um, we really want to to have this game out, but then again, yeah. Now talking to more creators and talking to more people who actually own land, there's again so many ideas of what else we could do and how we could enable creators better and yeah. give them give them more tooling. Uh, so obviously that all all that always produces the risk of yeah needing more time. Yeah. Uh, but then again, uh, it's all it's always going to be a much better experience. So yeah, we're really looking forward to that as well. Cool, man. Um, and it, it would will people be able to mine on multiple dungeons at the same time? Um, as a use as a player, yeah, um, you'll be able to play multiple dungeons. Yes. Yeah. You'll you will. need multiple characters. So you basically how it's going to work is that. The dungeons will have to be registered kind of so it's not enough to just have land right you'll have to set up a dungeon oh yeah you, ca you kind of have to register it right set yeah. up your rules and so on and you will always kind of guarantee that you keep this dungeon in this size for the rest of the season or for the entirety of the season because otherwise it wouldn't make sense if you could just basically just change it, it yeah be, yeah you you'd lure people in and then suddenly yeah. you would basically reduce your size to zero or whatever but that would be awkward. So you will not be able to unstake your land mm -hmm. until the season ends, mm -hmm. right? And then, um, so the, the dungeon will live for the entirety of the season. And likewise, if you want to play a dungeon as a player, you will have to assign your your wombat character to this dungeon for the entirety of the season, right? So you'll not be able to get it out before the season ends. Okay. Um, but you will need, need those wombat characters, right? So um, we actually just announced that the character drop will go, like the first character drop will have it on the, 6th of March, so a week and a half from now. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, we're, we're very looking forward to the feedback that people will have on the, the characters because you like the lands are optional for players, right? Nobody really needs land. The land is for dungeon owners, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but characters, everyone will need who wants to play in dungeon, the dungeon world. Yeah. Right. So I'm really curious how, how that's going to go. And out of interest, like, so can, can we make our own characters? Um, yeah, that's something that we have on the roadmap that okay. um, dungeon owners can actually create 
um, dungeon-specific items and dungeon-specific characters that can then only run in that dungeon and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure whether we'll have that at, at launch. So okay, that, again, that fair, yeah. Kind of further back on the, on the roadmap. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Well, good to know that it's been thought about anyway, you know? Um, yeah, you, I, you know, uh, after we started talking to people about it, um, we've been getting so many ideas, like on stream and in and, and Discord and stuff. It's like, it's crazy how how creative the community is about this and um, how many, yeah, how many items we have on our roadmap for this. It's literally, we have a Trello board, which is like packed with, with cards because there's so many ideas we have. Nice. Nice. Um, guys, I want to start off this Scrubfish. If we just take a little quick break there, let the guys win some packs, and um, I've got some crew tune stickers and some growfish, I mean, some uh, wombat packs to give away today. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna just see the grubbies. These guys that are in it are ready to rock and roll. Um, guys, don't forget X Mark Moon Dodge Turn Resize. There you go. Do your thing. Um, I don't. I'm not allowed to talk about who's what's happening on that that growfish because I tend to get people killed then, um, and their little grubbies explode. So, but what I do like to do is give first, last, and thirteenth something. So thirteenth will get a one bat pack, and first and last will get each a crew tune sticker today. Um, yeah, so we've we've I, I know what you mean about the um, talking to the creators, and they all kind of want want you guys to handle, say, the mining powers of different NFTs of their collections differently. Um, like for example i'm in moon mining and we didn't put maximum on our, our nfts so you've got uh, the best rarity of nft being the same as a common you know and for the players they're like it doesn't make sense and we're like yeah but there's nothing we can do about that now you know <laughs> it is what it is but i can see if you guys had to do it for every single collection that wants to come and play with you guys or be in your part of it if you had to manage everything i think with different mining powers i think it would get too difficult um, and open too many loopholes as well. Well, th that was the problem. Um, th th that was some. There was a change that we made in, in fall. We had this, this system where we would first um, use the actual number of mints, right? Not the max mint size. Okay. Uh, but that got exploited by a bunch of creators, um, of malicious course. actors. Wow. Um, sometimes um, on purpose, sometimes accidentally, right? Yeah. Um, and um, then we basically moved away from the system. So any new collection will be treated with this new system where we actually use the maximum. So long as the templates aren't blocked or ha don't have a, won't have a mass max supply, then they will be treated as minimum amount. But yeah, so we had a really great call with the creators, um, with the Discord uh, chat um, on Wednesday this week. And they brought up a bunch of really cool ideas of how we could be handling this. Um, it's going to involve a lot of software development for us, so it's not like I'm not I'm always not a huge fan of taking up um, massive extra efforts for us. But this sounds like um, that's really going to make a difference for creators, because I didn't know how much of an impact we actually have on some of the creators. I Yeah, like, you, do. you um, do. You've got you've got a lot of um, it's you. You give a lot of utility to a lot of NFTs that are out there that haven't that that aren't being used. You give a lot of utility. That, that's just one that's, thing. <laughs> that was that was the idea, right? That's, yeah. that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to give because like there's so many people who have so many NFTs, mm -hmm. and there's going to be even more people with even more NFTs, right? On Wax only, there's almost 400 million NFTs minted. What do people do with all these NFTs, right? Yeah. Um, and so we said, okay, why not? Why not give them utility, no matter whether we produce them or anyone else produced them, right? Yeah. But yeah, that got us into that situation where now we have to decide that <laughs> oh, this NFT is supposed to have 500 mining power, and this only five. And yeah. I mean, I don't want to be the person making these decisions. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Crazy girl. Yes, I, I totally hear you. And um, it must be difficult to be put in that position. I was one of the guys that went into that group going, guys, come on, like, you, this doesn't make sense. How could my, my one NFT that's have helium rarity, legendary rarity be the same as a common? And they just, I was told, like, look, this is the reason. Put a max on your on your template if you want to want it to, to, to be taken like that. And uh, yeah, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. Well, um, like I said, with the with the suggestions, there's like we don't have a concept. It's like very early. 
But um, the idea that was floating around is that the creators would actually be allowed to set their own mining powers for their own um, for their own templates based upon certain rules, right? So maybe creators that actually get listed would get, let's say, a, a thousand points which they could assign to their NFTs and they could exclude certain templates so that they don't become stakeable at all, right? And um, you could decide yourself which ones you want to have higher mining powers, essentially, right? And then um, the overall collection weight could be something that, that gets voted upon or something like that, right? Um, so there's a, a bunch of really great ideas so that we don't have to make these decisions at all. We don't have to watch or, or, or um, yeah, somehow crawl the the number of uh, mints for each for each template. We have about 40,000 templates that are stakeable in Dungeon Master, right? That's not manageable for us in yeah. any, in any no. like meaningful way, right? And like I said, I also we also don't want to be making these decisions. I don't want to like just because like, I I have no representative data, right? People tell me, okay, so this is. Um, this is bad, right? This, this NFT has, or this template has way too high mining power. So we, so then sometimes we change it, right? And then there's 20 other people coming in saying, hey, why did you nerf that? And why did you nerf it so much? Because we just bought a hundred of these just because it has high mining power. And now, now we basically have yeah, zero. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Worth so it's so, putting you in a situation that you don't want to be in. No, not at all. Because I mean, of course. I, I, I have... I don't have most of these NFTs, right? Yeah. I have no vested interest in, in any of those. Some I like, some I don't, but that's that shouldn't be me or anyone in the team um, making decisions like that. Or oh, this should have 200 mining power because we like it, right? Yeah. That's not how it should work. Yeah, it, should, yeah. it should be based on kind of what the community wants, what like whoever, whichever creator has uh, has a large following, has a lot of fans, and also whatever meaning these nfts have in in the context of this collection right? yeah yeah and that's what what we cannot be, be deciding we have 160 or so collections stakeable right we cannot be looking at each collection and saying oh yeah we think that this item is uh, has this meaning in this collection right it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just work like that. Oh, i totally but, get it <laughs> yeah so giving giving more power to the community is definitely like in, in all dimensions will will help us a big deal because yeah th these discussions are really uh, are really painful for us because um, yeah we can't we can't help it really yep it's totally man uh, I, I, I i if i was in your shoes i'd be doing it the same way <laughs> and i would have read the the dungeons is the exact correct answer it's it's 100 percent what what you needed in order to solve this issue um so I've got a question from Manolo. I, I would have liked to, he was supposed to be with us in a chat, but we would have had to both join a Discord chat as well as this chat and would have been too confusing. But um, so big question, how many different tokens can we add to our custom prize pool each season in our dungeon? So originally we were thinking one at the start, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that this would be enough. Um, but from a technical perspective, that's not gonna make a big difference. Um, so I guess we will have to limit it somehow for technical and RAM reasons and stuff. But um, I guess we could also make that dependent on the on the size of the dungeon, right? So that larger dungeons actually get to um, hand out more different tokens um, or something like that. So that um, yeah, uh, kind of like we don't we don't, we don't like, have. Yeah, sorry. So I was gonna say like the more you have, the better you can get. Like yeah, yeah, it just makes sense. Um, okay, that's man that's really cool we're we we like i can't say it enough how like we can't wait for this to start um because like as you say uh crew tunes we were fortunate enough to have someone in our community that uh reached out to um to, to somebody who was higher up than him in wombat um not not on the team or anything just in the staking and um this guy had vip level i can't remember says I don't know the high like seven I think or eight is it level seven? seven What's the five. highest? Yeah, yeah, uh, he had level seven and he put moon mining and crew tunes in, um, and because he did that, that's how and why this is happening right now. Um, it, it showed us the potential of of what could what we could actually do. And then when when actually when when the announcement of of the land sales came along and then the land sales started to come along. Uh, the the gent in the chat A3 Manolo, who's my partner in the lottery, he uh, and sorry in crew tunes, he um, he said to me, um, we have to get one, we have to, and you can understand why. And I I didn't know I don't know too much about Wombat. I don't. 
He's he was Wombat actually is one of the first projects I think that he knew about on Wax. If I remember correctly, that's what he told me. It was one of the first. It was the first project actually that he knew about on Wax, uh, and it was because it was listed elsewhere. If I'm not mistaken, that's I think that's his history behind of how we how he oh. got into got to Wombat. So. Um, yeah, so he's been really excited about it and pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and got me. Now I understand. And now I'm really excited about it. I thought it was just another land for another game, you know. Um, but it's not. It's not like that. It's it's what every land should be. We're going to put it that way. <laughs> um, well, that, that's what we're trying, right? We didn't like um, we didn't want to come up with land and then find find a reason why people should have it. Uh, right? Yeah. And there should also be multiple different ways of how you can use it. So uh, we also want to um, eventually get a bigger kind of economy around those. Right? Mining will be the first thing, but um, people were already saying, okay, well, how about I can build some kind of a shop that then can basically be pr presented in or will be presented in the neighboring dungeons, right? Where, where just automatically, just because I'm, I'm, I'm adjacent, will be presented there, right? And these kinds of things. Uh, so there's a lot of really, really cool ideas. Okay. Um, we're also thinking, uh, maybe you know, we have these uh, friendship uh, seedling non-transferable NFTs that you can get by referring other people from uh, via Wombat. Um, uh, not many people have them, but we're thinking like, how cool would it be if you could plant these seedlings um, on your land, right, and grow trees, yes. and then those trees would start producing oxygen and these kinds of things, right? So there's there's like a lot of ideas that we have with cool. the land and so on. But the, the core of it was really, and that's also why we didn't advertise, we didn't want to advertise the lands as, okay, every player should be having those or you will need those or whatever. But these are really for the creators, for the people who want to run a dungeon and it's it's, it's, uh, it's asymmetric on, on purpose, basically, right? Okay, because um, when, when I spoke to Alex originally, um, I said to him, I said exactly that. I said, I, I don't understand why creators don't all buy this land. I don't understand. It's what it is. It's basically for creators. Now that it's coming out of your mouth, it makes 100% sense of why it's for the creators. Yeah, exactly. And and like, we get we got the question so much. Um, do, will, will I need land in order to play Dungeon, Dungeon Worlds? And I'm like, no, that's that's exactly what it's... We don't want to make it super prohibitive for people. We don't want people to have to pay $200 to um, to start um, playing a game, right? It's a game. It's supposed to be a game. It's supposed to be fun, right? And it's supposed to be about connections between people, connections between creators and their fans and their communities, and so on, right? And that's that's what it's also uh, that's what it's all about, and not about oh yeah, I can uh, buy five axes or three axes, uh, two hundred uh, each worth like two hundred dollars, and then I'll be able to recoup my money within whatever x. Uh, seasons or whatever right that's like that wasn't the original idea and we're trying to kind of steer away or, or stay away from this kind of notion that this game is about making a lot of money very very quickly cool man um yeah it's it's not about like a, a quick turnaround like that so adrian's asking again he says i beg you to please uh, make us able to put more tokens in the prize pool for our dungeon that would give us give some great incentive for dungeon owners and our players true we because consider, consider it done thank you there we go adrian done <laughs> Basically, um that's the first time we get asked about it right but from a technical perspective we have no reason to kind of restrict that it's just maybe kind of let's say ram reasons or whatever so we might restrict it to a, a certain number but not not arbitrarily many but not like we don't have a reason to have it one or two or zero or whatever so that's why we We'll totally do something cool like that. because it, that had come into our plans with our, our crew tunes token that we will launch so that will be ideal a good way to distribute it for be people playing the dungeons you know um yeah yeah, totally. yeah so that's one of them want to show a sneak peek of our tokenomics agent <laughs> sure send it to me alex send it to me adrian um not you the other agent um just one second Sorry, she's telling me that my dog is outside and he wants to come inside. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so are you sending it to me in DMs? So oh, you might not be able to see it. Are you watching the stream as well? I Yourself? Know. No, okay. No. Um, how can I show you? I, I can. Um, tell me which, which 
channel agent. The underscore agent K. Um, okay, and then also another one here about the land merging for a dungeon. Uh, do the lands of our community need to be connected to ours? Uh, yeah, they do. They do. Uh, they need to be connected, Adrian. And he was saying that it could be out of a different shape as well. They'd originally thought it must be rectangle, but they've changed the shape to make it just... Once it's linked, it's linked. Once it's touching sides. Uh, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, okay, so let me bring up that... Uh, small little sneaky peek. So that's this is uh, this is like kind of an early copy um, of it. So the Crutons NFT collection at the top, um, and then we've got our uh, our dungeon, of course. So basically, you can stake X tokens. So that'll be our Crutons token used to play in bonus lottery tickets. Oh, this is our chip. So at the moment, they Earth chips. Um, the X token. So that'll be it's like our chip token, Earth chip token. Um, very cool and we're gonna do so we've got the treasury going into the dungeon going into the token back to to wax style pro which so we're gonna have wax style first wax style is gonna start first but by the way we're gonna have that going first um, and then we'll move on to having the dungeon so that's where the tokens gonna start being generated we'll be there um, before we move it to the dungeon so it is good that we're still gonna be able to use it in the dungeon itself um, we're actually thinking um, about kind of a DAO concept for the dungeons as well. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, we're not going to have that at launch again, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the latest date. So, but one thing that, that we're going to do is um, plan ahead for these things. Um, we're going to have a 1% kind of fee on the payout that will go to your dungeon that will go into what we call a DAO reserve, right? Okay. So eventually what we want to enable people to do is um, basically hand out the, the governance over their, uh, their dungeon to the, to the community, right, but through DAO tokens. And originally we thought, okay, um, uh, we'll, we'll have them mint their own DAO token, right, just like with DAO tools, whatever, um, right. Um, and now that you're saying that you're launching a token, we might actually also just ex uh, accept a kind of a, a, a an existing token as kind of the governance token for for uh, for yeah, dungeons, dungeons right? yeah. And the the idea was that we also uh, kind of use that one percent reserve for, to provide liquidity for the for the token for for all of these tokens immediately, right? That's why we we would we would go with kind of this little yeah fee whatever. Um, but if you have an existing token, we might as well just um, yeah well maybe deploy another liquidity pool or whatever. Um, but uh, use an existing token what might also be quite exciting actually I haven't haven't even thought about that because that's like a, yeah, that's the, a remote idea yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but i i so much like that because um it's also one thing that really fascinated me uh, about alien world styles now right when they when they launched them it's so cool that um you basically can hand out all the decisions to to all the communities in, inside of this um of this of this world so, yeah um, that is fascinating, isn't it? How people, how, it's, it's gone so far now, you know, the, the way that we're doing with blockchain. Another cool question, how deep will we be able to customize the rules for our dungeon? For example, will we be able to give bonus power for a certain mint, like like mint numbers inside templates? Um, there's definitely going to be expanding over time, right? Um, so originally, um, we thought that um, yeah, your stakeable collections, the um, run lengths, the run durations that you have, the weights of the run durations, that, that is uh, stuff that we want to make customizable. Um, we want to, so there's, we want to have like different curves of how you can distribute um, mining power across, um, across templates, basically. So um, depending on the number of mints, um, have a different, um, have a different kind of um, weight, um, but um, maybe we don't have to do it like that. So far, what we didn't do is basically um, have um, 
asset specific mining powers, right? They they were always template specific. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we had back when, when Sasha was still with us, we also already had like in summer or so, we already had the idea that um, it would be cool that let's say um, lower mint numbers would get higher mining powers and so on, right? Um, so these kinds of ideas have been floating around. We've also had um, quite a bunch of these discussions this week's creator call. So I guess that we'll do something like that at some point, but I'm not sure that, that we'll have that right, right at the start because the, the problem is not kind of applying these rules. The problem is having a nice tool set for setting them up so that it's kind of usable and understandable for everyone in the end, yeah, right? So the, the, whole, the whole user experience for both the creators or the dungeon owners and the players would have to work. And yeah, um, I'm not sure how we'll do that. So bear with us, but we'll have, we'll be adding rules, uh, more and more rules over time for sure. Cool. Excellent. That's cool, man. Um, right on, let me start another grubby for these guys. Another one. What role would the clans have in the Wombat Dungeon world? That's a big question. Um, <laughs> we've been we've been talking about that internally a lot, and we thought, okay, it would be so cool if you could have dungeon specific clans, but it also would make it so messy because if people play, I don't know, four dungeons or five dungeons, they would have to have five clans, right? And then we like we have this um, NFT based membership model in Dungeon Master right now, which we would somehow like to port to Dungeon Worlds as well. And then we thought, okay, then in each dungeon, you would have to manage all those membership NFTs and it would just get like a huge mess, right? And then right. if you want to if you want to play with the same people in three dungeons, then how is that gonna work, right? So for now, we decided that the clan concept will will be kind of global, right? Okay. So you'll, you'll be a clan of players who can then play multiple dungeons together. And the stuff like, um, yeah, sending help. And uh, well, so right now we don't have that many features for clans, but I can I can assure you that we have a ton of really cool stuff planned, uh, even before Dungeon Worlds launch. So launches so for Dungeon Masters still, right? Um, that there's going to be a lot of clan gameplay. It's going to be cross dungeon essentially, right? So that's the current idea. Um, however, we we're already looking forward to kind of have yeah maybe. Um, dungeon specific clan franchises or something like that right okay so that um they the players who are in the clan will be kind of form a separate group in in a dungeon and maybe they can invite other people over as well even if they're uh, if they're not in this in the same in the same um okay. clan globally but uh, yeah that's that's like so far hasn't been a priority in um how do we do that in structuring and, and uh, writing concepts and so on so um, the clans, like so far, are global. Okay, that sounds good, man. Um, sounds very good. Another one: Will we be able to create our own dungeon gear in our collection? Jeez, I'd say I'd say he really wishes he was alive now with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can still have the questions, right? Yeah, for um, sure. And um, so I think yeah, we we, we shortly spoke about it already. Um, we did, ideally, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's also, what, uh, by the way, that's also part of the rules that you will be able to assign to the existing sets of gear that's, that are already out there. You'll be able to assign different boosts than in the core game, right? Um, so if, if any dungeon or every dungeon might have different use for the, for the gears. And if you do that, then obviously it would be great if you could have your own gear. And if you could basically just set it up and say, okay, this is how I want to distribute it. I want to have packs. I want to distribute these packs within my dungeon and so on and so on, right? Yeah. So that's, that's all kind of with the, the base principle of what, how the dungeons are going to work will totally allow for this. Uh, right, you will also be able to hand out your own NFT packs randomly based upon certain um, uh, probability distributions within your dungeon. Right, fantastic. Um, just like what we do yeah. in, in the treasure chest right now in Dungeon Master, where everybody <laughs> is complaining that they don't know how that's being computed and stuff. Right, um, but uh, yeah, so these these concepts are going to be there. Right, you you have an NFT pool that you can fill up, you can fill it up any time, and then um, your users will you will be able to set up a um, the probability for each user or for like certain tiers of contribution or whatever. Um, and then they will randomly be getting these, um, these NFTs. And we will also be contributing 
kind of global dungeon worlds packs uh, into each dungeon's treasure chests, basically. Super. Right? Um, but that means that you can also set up, like, eventually you will also be set up your own uh, dungeon-based packs where you can distribute your own gear. And um, that, like, if you want to sell them, we can totally do that, let's say, on the ref, ref share, right? So you could do a 50, 50 ref share to, to the creators of the dungeon and then the, the, the items or whatever. It doesn't have to be 50 50, right? Yeah. So, so all of that can be part of the, of the system so that you don't have to go kind of to a third party page and do a drop there, but you can do it all on the, on the core uh, game side. Game side. Again, awesome. that's probably something that um, we'll have to wait a little until uh, until after we launched it. I mean, again, right? We could we could delay the launch to uh, winter and then have more of these uh, things in by, by the first day. But then again, we also want to see really how things work live, right? Because that's how you get the most feedback. So um, I'm also super eager to launch the, the the main game as soon as possible, as as kind of a yeah as, as bare bones as possible. Uh, version and then keep adding the stuff from you there. Just wanted to add, basically. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so <laughs> I got another one for you, Agent. Um, now about the characters, will we be able to mine in one dungeon, right? So if you want to mine in multiple dungeons, you need multiple wombats. Can you assign wombat to? Uh, no, your wombat agent has to go. It, it stays in that dungeon for the full season. Uh, sorry, your character. So whatever character you stick in a dungeon, it stays there for the season. Um, can you assign your wombat to your dungeon yourself, or will that be preset? So, oh. you can, you, you, so as a player, right, you can you, you will see a map. Um, we we're getting really nice designs for that. So we're currently thinking about is that going to be a flat two D or like on sandbox, right? Or um, our designers have been suggesting an isometric view, and I'm like, oh, that looks so cool. It's just that I'm not sure whether that's going to work with kind of a 100 by 100 grid, right? Um, anyway, so you'll see him as a player. You'll see a map of all the like. A, it's we have a 100 by 100 grid, right? Um, for for Dungeon Worlds, and um, you'll see all the all the um, uh, all the dungeons in there, right? And the dungeons will have a logo, and so on. They will be customized. They will have different colors, and so on. So you'll be you'll be seeing those, and then you you'll be able to assign any wombat that you have, right? You'll probably have I don't know five, ten characters. Um, and then you'll be able to assign each of these characters to exactly one dungeon, right? And then for the entirety of the season, this assignment will be there, right? And so whatever buttons you click, this wombat will be running, mining, whatever, in this dungeon, right? That that was created by somebody else. And you you yourself, you'll be able to play your own dungeon as well. I mean, um, yeah, uh, we won't kind of... It's, it's going to be like a, a race to the bottom if we try to restrict that because people will start creating a thousand different accounts, right? But um, there's not going, not going to be any kind of preset, right? Maybe eventually if we end up doing kind of um, dungeon specific characters right, that can only run in that specific dungeon, then they might be preset, right? So if you own one of those, then you can obviously only run in the dungeon. But um, that's, uh, yeah, in, in the beginning, um, each player will have the possibility to run in multiple dungeons. We'll also probably restrict that to a, to a small number in the beginning, right? Um, also, the, not the max number of players, the max number of characters, because there's only, per player, there's only going to be one character allowed in a dungeon. There's also going to be restrictions that you can set as a dungeon owner. So you could, might want to say, okay, I just allow um, characters level 10 and up or I just allow certain types of characters. Um, we brought out an article today about the characters and that there's gonna be 10 different types and so on, so we can talk a lot about this. Good stuff. Um, um, so you might also want to restrict it to certain types of characters or to certain rarities of characters so that you only get kind of higher quality um, players in case your, your dungeon will be limited. So in the first seasons, we anticipate that uh, the limit will be fairly strict on the total, on the maximum number of players per dungeon, right? And that will scale with the size of the dungeon. But for small dungeons, it may be as little as maybe 500 players or so, right? That can actually play this dungeon in the first season. Um, and maybe uh, and over time that will increase, right? Um, because we, we really first have to see how that all works, right? So we really will limit the total number of uh, dungeons per player the total number of players per dungeon and all these things will that that will be limited originally 
because we really don't know where this is going to go if we if we open up entirely we've seen crazy stuff happening uh right and we really want to have this we will have to find out what the competition between the dungeons looks like and we want to set the incentives right and so on so i i, I really anticipate that we will have to limit it to, to a certain to a certain extent in the beginning okay um i go right now is to give a cool unity utility to crew tunes collection um what would stop a dungeon owner to add every collection they can to think of in their collection in their dungeon what would stop mm. nothing i guess nothing you can do whatever yeah. you want right it's yeah. your dungeon it's your rules yeah. but if you, for instance you want to add a lot of um utility to your collection then you probably will not add too many others right yeah. um uh, and i guess that uh, but on the other hand i guess that's going to be kind of um um, a competitive um, mm -hmm. argument, right? So you might want to attract certain communities from certain collections, and you may want to give them fairly high mining powers because of that, or whatever, right? Some stuff like that. But I would assume that you, as a creator, would probably want to assign the highest mining powers to your own creation. Without doubt, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And and Without I think this is. Doubt, it, yeah. This is this is it's supposed to be like that. If you are a creator and you are buying land, you buy yourself the right of um, of making your collection stakeable at your own rules. That's the whole point, right? That's exactly what we want, right? That, that you you can generate more visibility and more more engagement with your collection by by making it stakeable. Or if you don't want to own land, you can go to somebody you know who owns land, right? So. Um, our famous Freddy, who has bought like the 10 by 10 land. Um, obviously, a lot of people will want to talk to, to him about, okay, hey, why don't you get us in and stuff, right? So yeah. um, that's, uh, yeah, that's what's, that's what's crazy. And that, that, that's exactly what we want. We want to foster these connections, these, um, these discussions between people, and also a certain amount of, um, of competition between dungeons. So that not like, it's not like, all is open and um, uh, nobody knows what to do, right? But people actually have an idea of what they want to do with the, with their things, and um, these dungeons have a purpose. And you can add a lot of um, additional utility by adding more NFTs or more tokens, right? So that's exactly what we want. For us, so, so like the, like we were saying, we got it in, in kind of towards the end of last year, but at the cusp of that happening, we were literally about to start with a developer on making a staking platform and we stopped that and did this instead for That's crazy we stopped that and did this instead for less than half the price and we don't have any dev issues you guys have the issue problems if there's a problem it's you, it's not me to fix it it's you guys can fix it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know? but we'll fix it for everyone at the same time correct right? you know what i mean no what, what i mean is is that there's not going to be problems i i won't have like you know how how like as a creator you have developers that potentially aren't on your team that you pay that come and go and they don't do things on time and something some things don't work and then you have to get them and they come back to you two three days later we don't we won't have any problems like that because this is a ready-made project that you guys are doing so we don't have that problem we will we basically have a platform now at the moment it's mining for 10k mining power let's go but <laughs> when it's when it's ready to go it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be um it, it'll, it's going to be out there and, and we were just we're super stoked man um and to, to have a hey, bdao what's going on welcome to the stream buddy mm -hmm. um yeah we, we're we're really looking forward to it um and we didn't have to get the staking platform that we were going to get which like the idea that we had was amazing we, we we probably will still do that in the future but for now this is absolutely perfect absolutely perfect for our for our project um yeah so yeah, if there's there's any ideas that you that you will want to contribute uh, to Dungeon Worlds and how we can how we can improve on that? Um, that we'll we'll have all, all those, right? That's why we're in so many discussions. That why that's why we're live uh, yeah. on Twitch, on um, Discord, multiple times a week, yeah. and talk to people about it um, because that's that's how actually that's how a lot of um, Dungeon Master actually was created, right? from community feedback. It was ideas that we had that we discussed with the community and then we were growing from there. And this is really what what has made it so so successful so far. And this is what we really want to keep. So um, I'm really excited about it as well. And I really love talking to 
you guys, uh, like whoever has bought land and has an idea for how they want to use it and, and basically, yeah, like really building um, token economies with that in mind, right? And, and how you will be able to utilize that. And we want to give you the tools to, to utilize it as best as possible. Cool. And we, yeah, um, like I was saying, and we've said many times, we're super stoked to utilize, we can't wait to utilize them. So uh, you reckon quarter three probably then? Late quarter three, you're hoping for quarter two, but more than likely quarter three or? Yeah, yeah that's kind of, okay. I've, I'm part, part of moon mining as well. And for us, it's, uh, we've got phase two coming as well, quarter three and four. And I'm guessing four. You know, I wouldn't, <laughs> I don't hang on to the first, the first one of those cues anymore. I always go for the second one now because uh, you know things <laughs> things happen, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, so guys in that grubby doing very well there. Um, I really want to say, uh, actually, all five of those people that are still alive are good guys in the community. That's good. Chop chop. There's only two left now. There you go, trust guys, GG's brother, taking home a nice crew tune sticker. And then, of course, number 13 is going to get themselves a Wombat pack. And then I've got uh, Arik again, another winner. Another win for Arik. Arik is actually... Um, do you remember I said to you that there's two... There's two single lands and a 15 pack and a 9 pack. So Arik and his friend are the two single lands. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, he, he hit me with loads of questions the other day and I was like, wait, just hang on. It's going to all come out on the stream. You can just oh, wait yeah. for the stream. Let's have them. Yeah. Um, they've, they've really, we, I, we, I think we've pretty much spoken about most of what we wanted to talk about. I do have one or two more questions on my little list there that I had for you. <laughs> um, right on, so it's a one bad pack. It's the Epsilon Standard Pack that we're just going to be giving away today. And then some Crew Tune stickers. Freshly minted. Should get you some some promo packs as well that you can hand out on stream. More than welcome to. Um, I was asking about. Oh, I, I see. Never mind. I can't. I won't bring it up. <laughs> we we have different facts, parts of our business. One is called the non fungible lottery, and <clears throat> we will. It's it's part of crew tunes. It's part of everything else. Um, and then we've got we've got we've actually got quite a few projects that we're starting to take care of and look. Uh, whew, without saying too much that we're starting to do <laughs> um, myself and uh, Adrian um, yeah and it's pretty good so let's get this on but it's all done all right guys we're gonna do one more last grub fish guys anybody in chat have any we need some promo pack Adrian Caesar says um, exclamation I'll play with your wallets guys uh, MIB asked a question above. Let's go find that. Hmm. Hidden NFTs can just be used in one dungeon or in all where are allowed? Um, so the idea is that each dungeon will have its own kind of staking space, right? So if you have one NFT and um, this is a lot of mining power in one dungeon, but also a lot of mining power in the other dungeon, you'll have to make a choice. That right? will only count for one dungeon and you will have to explicitly stake it to that dungeon because um, otherwise we would give even more power to very powerful NFTs. Yeah. Right? And I don't think that this is what, this is really what anyone would want. No. It's, um, in general, I think that staking is, is great because it makes, it shows exclusivity, right? If you stake it, if you stake something into one smart contract, then it means it can't be used anywhere else. You can't sell it, yeah. you can't stake it elsewhere. And this is also what we're going to be using for, let's say, um, single land mining and uh, training, for instance. You will have to stake your uh, character into training for duration of its training, right? So you can't be, you won't be able to use it to mine or to run in a dungeon or to breed. It's all going to be mutually exclusive. So either you do that or you do that. And we, the cool thing is that we can make sure that this happens by having them stake, Staked, stake, yeah. stake yeah. Have, having everyone stake them. Right. So that's, I really like the staking for that reason um, because it really shows that yeah you're, yeah, you're dedicating it to this very purpose exclusively. I also like the fact that people can't have their stuff for sale once it's staked. 
you know um yeah. there's a but that's also that's also for instance one of one of the reasons or the reason why we have this one one day unstaking period in dungeon master is exactly that that we don't we did we didn't want people to stake nfts start a run and unstake and sell their nfts or send them somewhere else and use those nfts to start another run with with those nfts on a different account and stuff right so that's why we have this, this, this unstaking period but um yeah, the cool thing about staking is also that it enables you, because they are already on the smart contract, enables you to do all kinds of cool things like renting. For instance, renting is easy to do when you have them staked in your smart contract and you can already use them, or technically at least it's easy to do. Renting is incredibly hard to do if you just want to do it on a primitive kind of NFT level, right? Uh, where it's just like, this is a super big problem that um, for the for the lack of, of a great solution, there is no big, cool, much used renting markets for NFTs yet, right? Okay. There isn't. There is no not for renting NFTs. There's there, there's only one thing I can think of now in, on on Wax, and there's there's Credit Metaverse, which is it gives you loan. You you can give them an NFT for for a wax loan and then pay back the wax and give back your NFT collateral, you know? Yeah, uh, but you then you also have to stake the, stake the NFT. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that goes, yeah. <laughs> and for, and that, that, that's what we were thinking about. I always thought, okay, it would be so cool to have a, to have renting. We've, we've been asked about renting quite a bunch of uh, times and I was like, yeah, there should be a renting platform on wax. It's, it's too bad that there is no NFT renting platform on wax. But if you think about from a technic, think about it from a technical point of view, this is also really, really hard to do because it's your NFT. So if you give it to somebody, they can run away with it. They, yeah. yeah. And w what if they don't pay you back the loan, or don't pay the interest, or if they don't hand it back? What can you do, right? Yeah. So you would always have to work either with a collateral or something else, and that's not not great, right? Yeah. Um, so, but with, if if you have an, a smart contract where the, those are staked already, right, and there are stakes, let's say, in the dungeon items uh, smart contract then we control them so we can make sure that you can use them in the game for for the duration of your renting like for, within your renting period but if you stop paying your rent then it will automatically be taken away from your let's say it yeah, will be unequipped yeah. from your wombat yeah. right and it will go back to the actual owner okay. owner's account right yeah. and then they can unstake it you can and you as a renter um, you, you just can't, rent it. You can't yeah. even unstake it, right? Yeah. So that's that's it's much easier to do if they're staked in your interior smart contract. Cool. I have a question here for you from Born to Be Shadow. Um, I I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you because it's for you. If you have a new collection, what do you need to do to get staked in the dungeons? Yeah, that's a great that's a great one. So that's probably going to change. But right now we have a form that you should fill in, and. Um, uh, yeah, if your if if your submission like there's no, no big rules, but sometimes we get submissions where the um, collection name is missing, for instance. And <laughs> then we can't go and no. find find the collection name based upon like certain information yeah. that we have, right? Yeah. So um, or try and assume one. So uh, there should be the collection name, a, a few information about your collection, but then we we'll look it up, and then as soon, as long as it's not like any kind of weird stuff like bad stuff or whatever and there's a little bit of creativity in there and it's typically it's good when it's uh, whitelisted on atomic or verified on um on nefty or, or whatever right one of these verification processes and it has a bunch of templates and ideally um a little bit of training volume but that's not really necessary right and we'll basically just do a few of these basic checks and then we'll we'll take it into our voting yeah. right so we uh, typically have voting twice a season where we'll have about five, six, seven collections in one vote, and the top voted collection will make it uh, into Dungeon Master and will become stakeable um, starting from the next season. Nice. Or starting from the next season, season or mid-season update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that. We we lost to um, Sea Break Gaming. I don't know, Consumer Break. Um, actually one of my f streaming friends <laughs> and when, <laughs> yeah. we, when we saw we were up against each other we were like oh, i was like oh come on how and why <laughs> um but yeah, yeah so we've we've done it before that um if the, if the vote was really close then we would actually add both oh right? wow um, nice. that's very but, fair of you um yeah because uh, if, if a collection really gets a lot of votes then 
why not add it, right? And then it, it would take up, typically it would take up the, the space next time in the vote. So what, what we also would do is we would you, we would put the runner-ups into the next round of votes as uh -huh. well. Yeah. Um, so that they have another chance because exactly that might happen that you end up, we kind of randomize the process, right? We don't, again, we don't want to say, okay, these, um, or we, we put these collections again, up against one another because again, we have no interest in um, having a competition between two collections, right? Yes. Um, so, uh, because that's kind of a randomized process and we don't kind of check the collections and we say, oh, oh this one is big and this one should not be up against another big one. Uh, we don't do that, right? So yeah. it might happen that, um, yeah, you end up losing to an even bigger or even more popular one. And then you should actually you should get a chance of, of actually getting in because uh, it's clear that some people wanted this or that there's a sufficient number of people wanted this. And I think for what was it, one of the questions actually make it, made it in in the second vote, right? They, they lost to one in the first vote and then the season after they got they got in by a wide margin um, after we put them up for voting again. Okay, man. And <clears throat> Adrian's last question, he says he thinks. <laughs> What will happen to the current gen dungeon? Yeah, so the original idea that I had with the current dungeon was that we make this kind of a special dungeon in Dungeon Worlds, that uh, there would be kind of the legacy dungeon. Um, okay. But the more we thought, we started thought, thinking about it, the more we thought that's such a horrible idea. That we'll have <laughs> 300 dungeons that are kind of normal dungeons, and then we'll have the special dungeon that will have special handling everywhere so um then we said okay maybe not um, and we'll have to upgrade the white paper update the white paper regarding that um but the idea is that um the current dungeon that's dungeon master will become a usual dungeon in dungeon worlds so all like we'll be setting up our rules we'll be having our prize pool that's uh, the twenty five thousand dollars that we have we'll just have that in our own dungeon within dungeon worlds and yes, you'll also need characters to, to play there, um, but we'll basically just hand characters to um, to whoever wants to play that, at least uh, at least common characters, and yeah, we'll just make up. Uh, we'll just be one of the dungeons in Dungeon Worlds. Um, it's not going to be on Genesis Land though, because on Genesis Land we uh, we don't have enough space anymore. <laughs> right? So, um, but we'll make we'll just make it one of the dungeons. Okay, cool. And you guys have your, your, do you have collabs planned for your characters, your actual, the, 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 the original Wombat characters that are going to come out now in the beginning? Um, um, th those are going to be kind of generic Wombat characters, okay. um, the type of characters that mm, they will look like the characters that we have, right? And okay. um, so they're going to be the Genesis uh, characters, um, but uh, we will have more additions of characters and there we will... Uh, we would love to do collabs, maybe with you guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, also with others, and um, there's going to be a ton of ton of characters with like nice. special features and stuff. Cool, because we've got some cool characters. Um, we've got like Tony Shark and Mr. Squid, badass Mr. Squid. He's pretty funky. Um, yeah, we like we also don't necessarily like. That's why we we like calling them characters and not wombats. Because ours, the, like the first Genesis ones, yeah, they're going to be wombats, yeah. right? But there's no reason why they, why they should should remain wombats all the time, right? Also, Dungeon Worlds is not like your, the name of Dungeon Master. We call it Dungeon Master, but officially it's called Wombat Dungeon Master, yeah. right? Yeah. We're, we're scratching that part of the name, the wombat part of the name from Dungeon Worlds. So it's only going to be called Dungeon Worlds, right? And, um, it, it will not necessarily have to feature wombats in all places. It might be any types of characters. Um, so we specifically wanted to open up for, for these kinds of things. Another actual really important question from Adrian. Uh, we use, as well as myself, I use Anchor. Um, are you guys going to allow that? Or are you just saying no because you got wombat? Mm, well, yeah. Uh, we will for dungeon worlds we will allow uh anchor i guess um for dungeon master i'm not sure but may maybe also there the biggest the biggest issue with um with anchor right now is that uh, one bit is anchor compatible as well and um it might get messy if you want to use anchor and you have Wombat installed, right? And you want you want to play Dungeon Master, right? So that's kind of the main reason. Um, 
but um, yeah, there's no reason to disallow Anchor. But if the question is, why should you stop using um, Anchor and start using Wombat? That's is that, pretty much it. Um, Wombat gives you free Wax accounts. Wombat um, gives you free transactions, like mo much, many more free transactions than you get with Anchor. Um, if you're if you're a level two staker, um, VIP, um, or higher, then you, you get 100 transactions for free every day um, on, on Wombat. Um, and I think that Wombat is just like, Wombat is a, a, a game platform, right? We're not, we're not just a wallet. Um, we have wallet functionality. So if you, if you like that, then you should use Wombat. If, if, you, if, that's, if you don't mind that, or if you don't care about that, then you might want to keep using Anchor. Um, and the, the, the biggest issue that we don't have in, in Wombat right now that um, is kind of, I think the main reason why people are using Anchor at least the people that speak to me um, is um, that we don't allow multiple accounts in Wombat, right? That was a er very early design decision that we made, um, which now is biting us. And it's like super hard to change that. And I have that, I've had that on the roadmap for a long time. <laughs> we actually allow multiple accounts, multiple WAX, EOS, uh, Ethereum, whatever accounts um, inside the Wombat wallet. Um, but yeah, we'll have that um, help this year. But um, it's, that's a really tough thing because there are so many assumptions that we've made that we have just one account. So it's, it's a bit crazy to, to, to change that. But this is something that we'll, that we'll be working on. Okay. Um, well, that's very interesting, man. Jeez. And yes, you can also have custom wallet names with us, right? So uh -huh. um, actually, I think that nowadays about 80% of the like custom custom wallet names that are they don't have a suffix um they don't are dot whams obviously they're random so i hate i hate dot whams um but also the dot gm ones that you get from Graymas or whatever right For, uh, with us you, you basically have to choose your 12 characters hmm. um we will have a suffix as well or an appendix as well but um it has not been a big priority for us we have that on 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 EOS, but not on that okay what do you think it would be on, on EOS, we have FTW. FTW. Which is, um, For the which win. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, on, on WAX, I'm not sure whether that's still available, to be honest. Okay. If anyone has the FTW, we could buy it. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, let's start that last Gobi. We're going to give up one little Gobi. And, um, man, I'll tell you, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with me today. Um, I yes, get I'm here. Yeah, great, getting, great questions. It's, um, it's, I, I, I enjoy this so much to be um, oh neon space is FTW. Ah, this special. So I gotta, <laughs> gotta talk to neon space. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Manolo is out of questions. That's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, really, uh, really looking forward and really uh, like let's uh, let's have more discussions of, of what we can do together, Fantastic. right? And how we can grow this together because. Um, we're really excited. We're still a lot of work ahead of us and a lot of decisions to be made. So um, the more ideas we get from, from all of you, the more we can uh, move in that direction. Like the token thing, right? Um, we thought that probably one token would be enough, but if you require more, then let's have it. It would be ideal, especially like if, if you think about, so for example, I'm gonna give, just give you like our, our predicament, crew tunes and the non-fungible lottery. We have partners and we have partners weekly and we have like partners that are stronger partners for example uh tales of the crypto and moon mining have been linked with the lottery from the start so end of 2021 um and for example those projects may want their token to be used as a reward you know and we want the capability to use that but for sure the crew tune token whatever we choose it to be we definitely will be wanting that to be used as a reward system as well for for mining um but yeah so it is very cool slappy stick slappy stink i think that um funny enough he's talking about tales of the crypto i think that they were looking for slappy stink um the other day i think um all right guys so the winners of that ggs that's first 13th at milu and last at potentially jt i'll have a look now i think it is jt because that goes up to 30 right it is jt ggs and milu nice guys i will send i've just done something wrong 
Who came last? JT, right? Oh no. Sorry, I just messed it up. I have to redo it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Right on, guys. Um, again, thank you so much for coming. Um, and I'm glad we had some good questions for you. Uh, we, I, I do know that maybe a question about new one by token distribution isn't 3,500 contribution, but half for average players. Um, well, I'm not sure. We did a we did a bit of math, and um, as we always do, um, so we kind of wanted to have it for about the top 500 to top 1,000 players. So this is how we set the 35,000, right? So th this is where we're going. I have the feeling, I haven't looked at the numbers since uh, yesterday, essentially, um, but I have the feeling that today when I got my bonus and it was, I had pretty much the same contribution as the day before, it was lower uh, than before. So I guess that there's gonna be a lot of people actually moving into Trying the for it, yeah. 30, 35K and up. For the average player, yes, maybe, but then again, we also wanted to keep it meaningful, right? And then at 10 million, Wombat tokens, I mean, that's a lot anyway, right? Yeah. But uh, we're handing that out throughout two weeks, so that's, that's quite big. Um, but we also didn't want to kind of water it down too much so that um, we don't have, uh, these, we don't incentivize the people who basically just stake a few NFTs and, and run a bot or whatever. Right? We didn't want to do that. Right. Um, yeah, Erga saying he's got 1800 mining power and only he doesn't even get the 3500 today. With 18,000, 18,000, yes, that's that's a bit too little to to get to 35k. Okay. Um, but then you need some more packs. Okay, you need some more packs, bro. <laughs> get him in there. Um, all right, guys, I'm gonna say thank you very much to you again. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on tonight. Uh, I'm gonna raid somebody and cut the stream and go and be a dad and uh yeah thank you very much I, I like i started saying to you earlier and i kind of jumped off it but i know that the other adrian is looking forward to talking to you um but we should arrange another one where i have him live with us as well um Definitely. he's dying to get a hold of your brain <laughs> um and so he could pick it a bit he's uh he's very keen very very excited for it great yeah thanks a lot for having me and i'm happy to to jump on another stream anytime nice man thanks very much thank you so cool. much cheers guys thanks very much for coming uh chat and um i'll deliver those prizes out tomorrow for you um take care everybody bye <laughs>